How you guys doing? Great. By the way, because there's a report out there, the Chiefs are adding Carlos Dunlap. Um, I know we visited him last night, but if this report is true, uh, what, do you, what do you know of the player and then what do you think he'll bring to this team? I mean, Carlos Dunlap, um, his resume speaks for itself. I think he had seven or eight sacks last year for Seattle. Um, you know, his, 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 He's a high character guy. I trained with him this off season um, in Miami, and um, if we're able to add him, and if the report is true, uh, we we'll, uh, accept Carlos with open arms. I think he's a veteran guy that's had a lot of experience in this league, and um, to have a veteran a guy like that in this position group, I think it'd be remarkable. Um, no, we don't really talk about. You know, I always told him I love to play with you. You know what I mean? Uh, Guys like Carlos Dunlap, Justin Houston, guys who set the standard when I was in the league. And, you know, I um, watched some of their film when I first came in the league. So uh, it's always a pleasure to kind of be around that type of guy, high character guy, you know. I think um, experience, one of the things, you know, we got a young group this year, uh, fairly young to me. I'm like one of the older guys in the group. Um, I think he bring a lot of experience. He can bring a lot of wisdom to the group. He also can uh, influence the group, you know what I mean, with his, uh, his leadership ability. So uh, we'd love to have him. Were you surprised that Melvin Ingram signed down on the instead of coming back? I was surprised, man. Um, Melvin, one of those guys I, uh, I felt like I didn't have enough time with. He was remarkable for us, man. Just uh, his presence meant a lot to us. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we got him later on in the year, you know what I mean? Me and Melvin was able to build a bun. We still kind of talk today. I congratulated him on his signing in Miami, and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing him. What about you? What, what are your goals for this season? My goal is to make sure that this D line is one of the best D line in the league. You know, whether it's sacks, whether it's playing the run, and uh, whether it's being gritty on the field. You know, and I feel like this team drives well. The defense drives off the D line. So the D line, you know, my point of emphasis is we take this day by day. It's a journey. But as uh, long as we're making strides 1% better than yesterday, then we're, we're going in the right direction. Chris, what are your early impressions of George and working with him and how he's moving along early? He's a high energy guy. Um, he's uh, very teachable. Uh, he's here to learn. I think he's uh, on the path he's on. I think he, he'll be a good asset for us on the D line. But, you know, he's still learning. We all are. How do you go across the defensive line? You mentioned the grittiness and everything. How do you go across trying to teach that and instill that in the young guys? you see it so far from so Yeah, it's something you got to instill since day one, you know what I mean? It's something that um, is going to be the foundation of this defense, you know. From, uh, you know, the D-line for me is the foundation of the defense and then carry on to the back end. And um, if the D-line play like a minute, uh, you know, I feel like we set the tone for this defense, you know. So I, I feel like that's a huge aspect for us, me and Frank Clark right now, to make sure we set the tone day to day for this defense, make sure we set it, set the bar high and what we expect from the younger guys. Yeah, we're gritty, man. We're definitely gritty here. What's your take on the, on the Guardians? Um, you know, I, I have no opinion on it. I think it's what required. And I, I think, you know, um, as soon as I'm able to take it off, I will. Really? Yeah. No, just make sure I'm in the best shape of my life to make sure that uh, I'm, uh, I'm able to play however many plays this, uh, this team want me to play. Chris Banks mentioned Thornton Hill and how he's kind of stepping out with the boys in the room. What have you seen from him so far, given Tyron is no longer here and maybe this is more of Thornton Hill's secondary? Um, I can reiterate what Spags says. I see a, uh, a maturity level is increasing on um, Warren Thornhill. He's forced to do more, so when you when you expect more from a person, they actually give more. So we send a lot of uh, leadership abilities from one. I always told one he was the guy. I always encouraged one. So just to see him blossom is a, you know for me it's an excitement. So uh, I think one is going to be really really good for us. Him and Justin, I think our back end is going to be really really good. Chris, you're a guy that uh, gets the fans fired up. What's the next year you be back out here in front of Um. Yeah, it's amazing, man. Um, actually, I started missing football, man. I wanted to be around my teammates. I wanted to be around the culture, and especially the fan base, one of the best fan bases in the uh, NFL, you know, and our uh, fans support us through thick and thin, you know. And we've been fortunate enough to give back to them by 
four AFCs, and you know, um, that's a journey. That's a journey, you know, it starts here. Um, you see how full it is out there on a day-to-day -day basis, and these are just the first two days. So uh, uh, I appreciate the support from our fan base. I love you, KC, when they watch this. And uh, it, it's very encouraging to us to see how many people come out here and support us. You mentioned being around, you mentioned being around your, your teammates. Uh, we hear about the offensive guys getting together in the offseason, Um, I think it's a little different. Um, defensive line, we kind of get together, but for the defensive line to get with the DBs, we do two different types of workouts. For So for them to be pulling sleds, we'll be looking at them a type of way. But uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So different type of workout. And um, But I think um, it's very imperative for you to build that chemistry along the defense, whether it's just hanging out, whether it's going to lunch, whether it's just a phone call or a text message, just to see how they're doing. So I think that's very huge for the success of the team. Chris, is there any uh, initial takeaways? I know it's early in the camp with just your new defensive line coach from what you guys have talked about really in the offseason and what you've sort of seen these first couple days. I think me and Joe see eye to eye. Um, I love Joe, actually. Um, I think uh, – our standard is the same. The bar for the D line is high, as it should be. I, I think his expectation level uh, for us as individuals and also us as a group is where it needs to be. And it, you know, it's a journey, man. It's a day-to-day -day process. You know, um, don't get too high, don't get too low. You know, just try to stay even flow because some days you're gonna have really, really good days, and some days the offense might kick our ass. But it's a, it's a learning, it's a learning curve for us as a D line. Hey, you first, what's uh, Nick Bolton been like? Um, he's been the same as he always been. He's been very vocal. He's uh, he's been a, a a special point on his defense, man. Uh, Nick, Nick, you know, since the first time he stepped on the field, you see how in awe we was as not only fans but as teammates. You know what I mean? When you see a guy doing so well, you know, it, it only can help this defense. So, you know, we're glad to have Nick back there. Him and Willie Gay got to keep those guys healthy. It's nothing deeper, man. We just got to get the quarterback down.